Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this episode, we are making a variety of edits to the mod we previously made, Add Spell Menu. Hooray! Apparently, um, some people like it. Um, so yeah, we're going to make some fixes based on some feedback. And some just based on some of my feedback and other feedback, uh, here's a list of some stuff that I think we should do. Should I make myself big? Will I forget to make myself small? I always do. I always forget. It's going to be terrible. Be small. That way I'll be small again. We're going to do this. Uh, someone reached out and asked if they could translate the mod. So I want to get back to them. I want to make sure it's pr translatable. Uh, the message boxes that we show include uh, not only full messages, but they also include some variable words like uh, your search for poop did not bring back any results. So if we want to translate that, um, we'll need the poop to stay in the originally typed language. Uh, so let's look into translations. I want to make all the scripts loose and uh, also make sure that when we install this with like Vortex, I want to make sure that it shows that there's a conflict with the UI magic menu provided by UI extensions. And then we can put into the instructions like, hey, BT dubs, um, you should have this overwrite that menu or X will happen. It's totally compatible. Um, folks will just get an annoying little message if they don't use our version. Um, and our version is totally compatible with all mods as far as we know. So, here's a huge one. Big, 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 big one. That now that people apparently care about the mod, uh, which is unexpected, I think uh, that was really important. Super duper 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 important. People may like the mod, but they might not include it in their 255 set of mods like it. That's asking a lot. I don't like non ESLified mods, so. Uh, we'll move our stuff, uh, our NPCs, from the cell that we made. Did you hear those truck noises? I bet you don't. From the cell that we made into one of the existing test cells that's built into the game. Um, or, instead of using NPCs that we add to the game, we'll use some existing NPCs. Uh, we might, might want to make sure that if they die, that it's okay and that the game still works, that the mod still works. Because um, what if someone goes around killing all of the vendors or whatever? But I would love it if we just grab two commoners in the game, which are very, very unlikely to be replaced by some other mod or like taken over by some other mod like ours um, and maybe use them as spell containers because that's what we need our two temporary NPCs for. We need them for the magic menu exchange to make it work. Um, this one like minor little thing I saw, which is um, our activator object is called add spell menu space search and uh, the add item menu one has a dash in there and I think the dash one looks better. Um, oh, here's a really cool one. Uh, right now we have instructions in here that you need to put in a console command if you want to turn on or off the ability to search for spells that don't have spell tomes. So let's give them a spell, the users, which does have a spell tome, so it'll show up in our search results. Uh, so we'll have a spell that will allow you to easily make this change without going into the console. It'll just flip that, flip that bit and give a little message that says you turned it on or turn it off. Um, that one is super translatable. Um, translations are gonna be sweet, sweet to have. It'll be cool. Um, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna be small. I'm gonna be small now. Bad. I'm small now. All right, what do you wanna start with? Oh. Uh, there's this last one I didn't mention, which is, um, you know, let's just make it so that if people want to, they can use our uh, global non-hidden add spell menu um, uh, thing, script, and they can say stuff like, um, you know, search. 
maybe give it a string optionally, else uh, show search or something. Maybe there could be like a UI search and a regular search. I don't know, something like that. Let's give them some stuff like that because maybe this could return a uh, spell array or something instead. Let's give folks like um, some helper menus, helper functions in case, in case um, they would like to make use of stuff that our, script, our uh, scripts do, which uh, we basically just call power of three. Um, but, you know, um, the UI search in particular is something that uh, you'd have to call our functions to be able to easily prompt and uh, bring up properly. So, fuck, we're six minutes in. Might be. Let's do this. Let's do this thing. I'm going to drink my tea. Because uh, last night we did an episode where we made a, a bag of holding and I drank champagne. That was a fun episode. That was a super, super fun episode. Um, so let me add back my add spell menu profile that I haven't had in here for a while because I thought we were done with this mod and uh, it requires SKSE and UI extensions. Let me drink my tea. Drink my tea and I'll be back. Uh, I'll leave this list up. Decide what you want to do first. All right, so I wrote these out in no particular order, but um, maybe we'll just go through it in this order. Just cause, cause I don't have a better suggestion and there's some of them that I don't wanna do and that'll uh, make us go through them. Oh, I added an idea or two. Were these here a second ago? Um, maybe just for funsies so that we can learn how to do it. Let's make our new version, which will be like 1.1 upgradable. Like, um, so we'll know if V1 was installed and we'll actually make some of these changes. Um, I think the only one I can think of would be um, renaming this. So if you're coming from 1 to 1.1, we can rename that. Um, and we could show messages if UI extensions or Power of 3 Papyrus Extender are not installed. So let me save this and let's hop into our mod organizer and I'm going to open up the add spell menu. Whoops, not an explorer, although that'll fine. That'll be fine. Oh, there's our um, readme for this. And there's a build folder. And right now it is self set to build true and package. Uh, if we want everything to be loose, then uh, loosey goosey. We can set package to false. Um, we don't need anything about BSA files. We don't need anything about, about packaging. Um, except we will want the PEX files um, and the uh, PSC files to, uh, to go into the zip file. I'm kind of lying though because uh, I normally put things like translation files into a BSA. So sure, let's package it up. I will uncomment this thing that says translation files go into that folder. Um, and we'll have the ESP, the BSA, and our loose files go into our zip file. So if I build right now, should we create our add spell menu zip? Let's reveal it. Open it up. Let's delete it and make sure creation is working of it. Package true, zip true, save. Right now package doesn't have anything that's putting inside of it. Build. Import path doesn't exist. Papyrus extender because I haven't, uh, I didn't move that. I keep all of my mods um, in like the special folder where I only pull them in to uh, the main folder when I'm using them, um, which means we need the address library as well. And we're going to need to turn that on. Let's fill my screencast. That's why when you go into my um, 
hop into my mod organizer too in my screencast. It's always empty. I'm going to keep Always Raining in Skyrim in case we hop into the game because that's a mod I made and we will show the screencast for that at some point and release that one. Uh, it makes it always raining, always raining in Skyrim and I like it because I like the rain. As those who have watched know, I always celebrate when it rains. And now I celebrate all the time. Cool, now it has loose scripts. If we really wanted to, we could even copy the um, uh, scripts source into source scripts, um, which makes it easier for other folks to use our scripts because some creation kits put it in some place and we'll want that when we add a uh, add spell menu. So let's add a... Um, New folder source. Okay, subfolder called scripts. And we're at, we'll add a post build event. Uh, this copies the script source PSC files into source scripts to make add spell menu functions easier to call. Cool. Instead of deleting the BSA, let me see how to copy all the files. Let's see if this works. I um, copy, or is it X copy? I don't really use Windows. Uh, X copy everything from scripts, source star.psc into source scripts. I don't know. Build. Ran. Let me fix it. Now, uh, I didn't change the description, so maybe that matters. Uh, copy um, psc scripts into source Save. Let's try X copy again. Build. Post build remove PSA files is running. What about this? Maybe multiple commands go into uh, this. Looks like a bunch of stuff got copied. There we go, source scripts, all of our stuff is in there. Cool, we'll just need to remember to not actually edit those. All right, dope. So we did a thing, we made um, all the scripts loose. It's not what we said we were gonna do first, um, but let me save this. Um, use loose scripts and copy scripts into source scripts. And now if you don't know why we're doing that, uh, Creation Kit by default um, uh, looks for all of your PSC source code files for compilation in the directory source scripts. Um, so all the well-made, uh, popular uh, utility libraries out there for Papyrus will put their PSC source code files into script source and source scripts um, because your Creation Kit will use one or the other. And so good on you, everyone who does that. Um, Papyrus Util, that's who I learned this from. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, LFI is gonna be interesting. Let's make the translations. Um, let's go and make a interface folder. We'll make it now. New folder, interface, Inside that, new folder, translations, I think it's uh, S translations, and then we'll do add spell menu english.txt. And now the most important part, um, and we'll just say um, add spell menu 
tab. So the most important parts are, one, set up this file to use tabs, indent using tabs, to add spell menu, spell name, search spell name, add spell menu dash search, uh, these have brackets, uh, the actual spell name is brackets. We zoom in and try and select this, it should be one thing, it's tab, that's good, but uh, it won't work as UTF-8, uh, let's save this, it needs to be UTF-16 LE, and then it does that, do undo, save, now it's UTF-16 LE, cool, 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 cool. Um, we could show this working with any of our, like, with anything, you can go to script source, Quest script at the beginning of the game will say debug menu, message box, test hello. So we'll go in here, these are supposed to have these. And we'll say test hello, hello world, save. Uh, if we build everything, now we're going to load from source anyway, but I want to make sure that our PSC file uh, puts those translation files into a package. Boop. Cool, we don't have textures because we because uh, we don't have textures, but if I build now and I look at the build file, mods, add spell menu, build, zip, and open up that BSA, there should be a interface directory with our translations file. Cool, 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 cool. Let's run this and see our translation work. How does that sound? Um, I want to make sure when we edit this that it saves everything into add spell menu. And if we edit it with SSE edit, which we'll use to ESLify, that it also puts it into add spell menu. Cool, but we are just running the game with SKSE. And we're just looking for a translated message once the game starts with our mod. What we will end up doing is we'll um, install the mod off of Nexus mods, we'll do a save game, then we'll upgrade to ours, and then that's how we'll test our upgrade. So let's do, um, I think we'll use SKSE to rename the spells so that the translators can rename the spells. I don't know if spell names can have Unicode characters. Mm -hmm. We can test that. which just says dollar test hello. Uh, that might be because SKSE didn't have its translations kind of up and running. Uh, I've had problems in on in it in particular, specifically in on in it. Let's say utility dot wait three seconds. And it might just be that on in it doesn't work, except we're gonna want on in it and on player load game. Because we're gonna wanna put stuff in the upper left debug notification, like add spell menu upgrading. If this doesn't work, you can try a player script on player load game. And I'm curious if that works, that's kind of more important. Let's see, that says test hello. Make sure that our file is indeed still so tabs it says space is four so that's a tab that's a tab that's a tab and then using tabs and remember hmm <laughs> do we have a player script we're going to want one so that we can do our on player load game. 
Let's see if this works on a load game event instead of uh, on init. It is called on spell menu, so that should work. And if we go to data interface translations, we can see that our, our add spell menu file is there, and that is the name of the plugin. Let's open this up in Creation Kit and let's make a player script, shall we? I'm going to need more tea, like, fiercely. We'll make it through this whole list. We'll do it, and then I'll release a new version today. Uh, and then I'll get back to those translation people. I really want to find out. I, I saw one mod that did something weird with curly braces with their translations that might make it so that you can concatenate translations with other things. But there's like no freaking documentation about that stuff not that I can find. Okay. Let's go to add spell. There's our quest. It indeed does not have a player script. Let's do player ref. And we might end up decentralizing things from our quest. Call the player ref. That always auto completes. There it goes, it was slow. What do we name our stuff like? Add spell menu underscore. Quest is just quest. We'll just call this player script. That's what I always call mine. Mm. Going to extend a reference alias. And all that stuff is fine. Okay. Okay. Save. Uh, we might want to give it an instance of the player. Um, it's common for a player ref to have a actor uh, direct object reference in it. Fucking leaf blowers. I'm going to have to take like an hour off of this. And I, I promise if the leaf blowers keep going, which they're probably about to, that I am. Um, I'll do something other than work on the mod. I don't like to work on the mods without you being here to see me totally fuck it up okay player script event on player load game and event let's just try this for right now fucking leaf blowers let me type this out at least all right, I'm gonna see if this works. Okay, I haven't heard the leaf blower in like two minutes. That took like 45 minutes. That was infuriating. All right, so I played around um, and uh, debug notification totally translates great, um, but debug message box, and I thought I had seen this working before, but I guess not. It just like straight up doesn't translate. So uh, we're going to need messages instead of message boxes. And uh, our messages will just have one button, click OK. So, what shall we do? We've got a translation file. Should we go through and start translating things? Uh, we've got the debug notifications, which are great to translate. Um, but right now we also have, um, let's just search for all of our message boxes and we'll replace them. There's six of them. Uh, that is legit a debug one. No spells found, no uh, matching. Actors none, no spells found. 
oh, there's only three and there's really two because it's searching in the um, source scripts directory. And, and let me actually make sure that I don't accidentally look within my source scripts directory right here. And so I'm going to go to um, my VS Code exclusion for files. Exclude. And I'll add the pattern source scripts star dot PSC. Let's see if they go away. Cool. Now I don't see any in there. And let's see if uh, find in files finds those. Cool. Now it excludes those. Cool. So now I can still be compiling things into source scripts, uh, but not accidentally edit them, which is fantastic. Um, so let's go to no spells found. These are the two that we want to translate right here. So these need to become messages. So no spells found matching blah. Um, we need a message box uh, to open on up. And we'll need an instance of it. Hopefully we can use form IDs for that. Let's head on over to Creation Kit where we're gonna make stuff. We're gonna make stuff good. So spoiled by messages. And uh, God, I haven't done this in the longest time, but we can have aliases attached to our messages and we can use that to replace the little bit of text. I haven't done that in ages. This is going to be add spell menu um, search not found. Let's see, message search not found. Title, title, message. We'll add a button, but let's save this first. <coughs> My tea is spicy as always. And uh, we'll have the button text be um, okay. Whoops. I haven't done this in ages. Cool. Item conditions, functions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, owner quest, I think that's how we can use aliases. Almost 400. like bracket alias name equals, but I want to see someone show it somewhere. Yeah, I've been here. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So we want an alias that's like whatever. Cool, it can be in messages. Relationship, alias. Ooh. Tag is replaced with the value in global global name. Oh, that's just for numbers. I wish there were global strings. I get it. I 
I don't know how to do this except to have like an NPC. I might be able to be an object. Before we do the translation for aliases, <coughs> I kind of feel like we need to start putting stuff in cells because we're going to need a thing that has the text of the alias. Hacky is all get out, but it's the only way I know how to do this stuff. Um, so in CK, let's uh, we'll get back to the message. Okay, this is a test cell I want to use. Um, warehouse bookshelves. Um, w e merchant chess. Cool, let's pick a corner and start putting stuff there. I suck at moving around this stupid thing. I don't know how people get good at it. Let me do upside down or whatever. I want to put stuff in like a corner. How do you, I wish you could fucking pan like Lights on, lights off, that's not what I want. Like, I want to go over there. The only thing I've learned for sure is to uh, select an object or you're fucked. Well, I'll put stuff in one of these corners. There's a good view. Um, so alias, I don't even know if it needs to be an NPC or something. Um, we could just put our little collection of NPCs. Um, we can even have brand new ones if we uh, don't like the way that they're named. Actors, actor, new, let's do add spell menu npc underscore I think the temp one can get used for either messages or for um um, uh, trading spells with uh, when we use a temp one to move one spell over, one spell over, one spell over when you learn it. Because um, our message box is about showing. So let's just make them all separate. Um, message box, message alias. Cool, doesn't need a name or a short name. Let's give them close in case anyone ever comes in here. Find close. There's our Khajiit. Does anyone know how to scroll faster in this thing? It's wicked slow. And I don't have one of those mice that you can just go wee. I've never been able to figure that out. Um, okay, cool, 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 cool. There's actor one. Did we get rid of our cell already? Let's go to our cell and get rid of all that stuff, and we'll come back here. We should just have the two NPCs and a container. This is an instance of barrel. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. 
Uh, let's delete our cell. We have to open up another one so that we can delete. Yes, we want to delete it. Let's save because that stuff can crash sometimes. Here's the merchant thing, and it didn't go back to a great spot. Very cool. Um, we'll make a uh, brand new NPCs with nice names. Just NPC blah, NPC blah. Oh, I did my makeup while I waited for those fucking leaf blowers. I probably look at least a little bit more alive and awake. But uh, cheers from. Croy and me to you. Hey, I'll be small again now. Um, we got a mess in Julius. Let's make it test. All right, let's test it. Uh, let's add it as an alias to our quest. Its alias name is add spell menu. We could just say message text alias. What do we call our NPC before we grab them? Message alias. What if we say message text? Just call him message text. Him or her. It's her. Yes, I'm sure. We call their NBC message text. Come on, they're in merchant chests. Why don't they show up? But we didn't put them in merchant chests. Let's put them in there somewhere. Boop. Hanging out in the corner, like you do. All right, let's go to our quest and our alias. There's like nothing in merchant chest, so it should show up. Cool. And it doesn't need a script name. Um, so what we're gonna do now is let's grab our message, which we called. Um, message search not found uh, is this too long can we say message is that too long of a form name sweet I like long long form names I keep waiting for a job to start um and then I'm gonna be able to do way fewer videos so I'm recording as many as I freaking can I released like 44 in the past week which is the first week of my YouTube channel and now I'm trying to bank them I'm trying to make as many as I can but this one is gonna go out as soon as I'm done because um, we're gonna release release this on Nexus and get back to those translation folks and uh, get their help translating the mod in however many languages they want I know that they want to do it en français to begin with so let's go to our message box Here's the spell that owns it. So because it has an owning spell, we should be able to use alias names in Hya, like alias message foo, and we'll say uh, alias name equals, and we called it just like message text, message text alias. Could it just be message text. We know it's an alias. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, and we need an instance of them so that it can be associated with an alias. Uh, otherwise, the instance part doesn't really matter. Uh, and uh, we can just change the name of their base form when we need to. So let's just go to our quest on init and uh, in our quest script, just do this stuff. 
We're going to get a reference to them immediately, but I just want to get it. Um, I, I just want to keep using IDs, even though that's going to suck when we come back to the form IDs. Um, I don't know. Um, int um, search message ID equals int um, um, and just call it message text and just treat it like a form, like any other form. So on in it, what we're going to do is get a reference to the message itself. And so the message is 9972. And the, uh, the base form for the alias is 9971. That stuff's definitely going to change. It's going to suck, but it'll be OK. Um, let's get a form. Form, we'll say a message. Um, message the message equals to make this bigger for you get mod form search message id as message form message text equals it's like te text replacement is maybe a better name but whatever get mod form Message text ID, placement ID, something like that. Oh, we're using SKC, so we can say message text uh, set name. Hello world. Cool, and now let's show the message. And we can get the int. Uh, but it's just an okay box, so we don't really care. And let's run the game. I kind of want to turn package off so I don't see all that nonsense every time we compile. And we'll turn off our uh, post build script. Now if I compile, it should be way less noisy. Ooh, does xcopy take a replace argument? A slash y for yes. And you add it afterwards. We're learning, we're learning, we're learning things. Learning things, cool. Cool, slash y. We'll try that later once we actually are, are building the stiffs. But for right now, let's just save and compile. Cool, now it finishes. It was hanging before because it was asking us if we wanted to um, write a bunch of files. Yes, save changes to plugin file, boot this up, and we're just looking for a message. We're looking for a message, and we want the replacement text to be hello world. And if, if that's the case, then we've got a message box that's set up, and we just need two of them, one for the search and one for the, um, uh, the not search, and uh, whatever the other one is for. And uh, the next thing we're about to do is see if we can get translations working with it. Yuck. just works. Where's my message box at? Where's my message box at? Yeah, it probably returned null or something. We could just connect them to the quest using properties. I bet this returned nothing. 9972, 9971. That return nothing.
I'm a debug message box get mod farm search message ID. We'll do that real quick before we hop back into CK. It should say none, or just it won't say anything at all. It'll just be empty. It's a farm. But if we do it as a message, and run it, do we get a message? Or do we get none? None would mean the casting didn't work. I don't know how far we are into the episode because I accidentally stopped it before. Um, I like to try and keep track. Part one was 30 minutes, so we're 45 minutes in. So, um, why didn't that work? You should just, when you're doing this, use properties. Just use properties. There's very few reasons not to use properties. There's some things that I'm doing that are definitely anti-patterns, and there's some things that I'm trying to reproduce that other folks have said are patterns, like, for example, not binding a million properties and only grabbing forms and things like that when you need them and using integers for it. And you can even hard code the integers so they don't hang out in memory in your safe game on space, whatever. Um, we want the message, we want a message now. It says it's a mes message and it's 997 fucking one. No, it's not. It's 9971. And I think the replacement is 72. Yeah, I switched them up. And you can always have like a JSON file and put all these IDs in a JSON file and load them up with JSON util through Papyrus util. But I'm not going to add another. Um, I already hate that we have um, need power of three um, Papyrus extender. I'm just going to call it the virus extender from now on. Um, that's a lot to say. alias equals alias name. I think I did alias name equals alias name. You could probably open this up in SSE edit a lot faster. But with uh, the creation kit fixes, the SSE creation kit fixes, um, this loads pretty darn fast. So. We want alias equals message text. Just alias equals message text. OK, save, run an SKSC. And we can also recompile without printing out this message box because we don't need it anymore. The one that was just debugging. I wish this chair didn't squeak really annoying but it works really well so we'll this week the message dot 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 foo well, that's neato
could get 9972. We could get the actual instance, but I don't think that matters. And even if we have the instance, we're going to have to change it via the base form anyway. Hmm. I feel like the last time I did this, I did, um, um, I think I did this. Forget this. Forget this. Last time I did this, I said uh, get alias by name, which is comes with S K S E. Um. Do we call it message text? It's an actor, so we'll get the actor reference. I'm gonna try and set name. So we should really do actor get base object set name. Foo bar save show. Bracket dot dot dot. Let's try one more thing. And then I'll try this on my own. Make sure the alias is called uh, message text. I'm only using SSE edit because it's interesting. name message text it's just interesting to learn where things show up in SSE edit cool it's not useful um, Figure out what the F. We need to make sure our uh, our reference stores text. This indicates to the quest that the alias name needs to be saved onto the quest instance data. Okay, let's open this up. Open it up and go to the quest and make it store text. Totally done this before. It was ages ago when I was just learning how to mod. Oops, we want to go to the quest. Go to the message text alias and say stores text. It's over here somewhere. Stores text. Boop, 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 boop. Now it might be empty because the, um, when it gets filled, um, when it 
it gets filled, it's going to hold on to that name at the time of creation, I think. So what's on alias? I can't fucking set a name. Can you do it on a reference alias? No. Fuck. Jesus, we have to like, um, if it stores the text and uh, it doesn't update the text from uh, what it changes from the base actor, which is what will be the case if this is just blank because we didn't name our NPC anything. Oh, thank God. Whew. That was a journey. A journey, I say, a journey. And now let's make the actual things work. Things will probably have a reference to the quest, so what we'll do is, um, because the way we've done stuff so far is like everything has a freaking reference to the quest, um, we could have a global that handles all this stuff for us, um, which I kind of want to do the next time I do something like this and not have everything have a reference to the damn quest, but um, our stuff does have a reference to the quest, so we can say a function uh, show search fail your message um, string query string and function and then we'll function what the hell is the other thing that we show show no spells in mod message string mod name and function alias text string text and function rock on now let's go to um, wherever that thing was no spells found actually go to CK and make that the text and then we'll duplicate the message and we'll have um, the other one good 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 and then uh, fuck we need to test if it's translatable we'll do that right after we do this uh, no we won't we'll do this we'll do that right now When you build the game, I don't need to give the person the item. What we'll do is we will, um, oh, okay, we, we do need to all open this up in the background. Here, I'll let it open. Cool. Uh, we do need to go to that message and just change the text to be like dollar foo. Let's try dollar foo with the alias in there. We'll make the message dollar foo alias space dollar bar, okay? So we'll make translations for foo and bar and see if it works. God, I hope so. Please work. Which 
Let's just remember that it's fucking tabs. Foo, this is foo. Bar, this is bar. Save. And uh, we'll set the message alias text to this is the alias text. And then we will show the search. Uh, show message for the search failure. Oh, um, this is the query string. Quest script 29. Twenty-seven. What does it say? Function variable mod name already exists. Oh. The mod name. Mer. Set message alias text to my name. Set message alias text to query string. Boot her on up. Oh my god. Come on. If this doesn't work, I might try it with Sky UI installed just out of curiosity. But it's SKSE that does all the translations. the alias without everything else Fuck. Just put foo in. That's the entire text of the message box. I have no idea what the title is for. Let's see if the title shows up anywhere. Dog and I are gonna go outside. Let's show you the dog. This dog, oh, she's panicking. And uh, then, uh, what I'm gonna try next is um, instead of doing this on in it, um, sure, I was searching for stuff. Um, instead of doing this on in it, let's do it when you cast a spell i just i just want to try it not in on in it so we'll try that in like two seconds in three two one okay dog walk complete i want to try um i just really quickly want to try updating one of our spells to do this so it's not on in it effect list So when we cast a list spell, let's have it call uh, this. We need to give the player the pack so that we can get that stuff. I get ready for a date pretty soon. But apparently Skyrim is my priority. Okay. Cast the list spell. Power, whatever. 
Whatever triggers the effect should do it. Which I guess is actually only a spell, perhaps. Oh, got rid of that fucking container. We gotta fix that container. Oh, that's fine. Um, let's just give them the spell at the beginning of the game. Activator, activator, activator. Pack instance. Pack has all the fucking tomes in it. Whatever, let's just go in game and we'll get the tome from the console. I just want to make this work. We need the list spell. That's 05 800 Oops, it's power. Is a, uh, it is a tab and it's UTF 16 LE. Let's try test hello, but there's no reason for that to work and the other thing not to. So here's my thought. Um, someone tell me if you can translate messages, debug message box, or just the message component. You can translate notifications. Um, we could also do our own thing with our own files, but I don't know how to do any of that without Papyrus Util. Um, if we want to translate the names of spells or something, that has to be manually done. We can have separate ESPs, of course. I don't know how .string files work. Okay, so I guess I need to learn uh, both X Translator and potentially ESP, ESM Translator. This could take a while. Okay, so here's the deal. There's two main tools, X Translator and ESP as ESM Translator. I gotta learn them. I don't wanna learn them in front of an audience. Uh, I've got a date tonight and afterwards, I'm gonna learn these tools, okay? Uh, and then tomorrow, I'll make a new screencast, probably about how to use them or sometime really soon I'll do something about translating your mods localizing them so we've been going for like an hour and eight minutes or something I'm gonna call uh, I'm gonna call it on translations but we did start ESLifying we got rid of ourselves uh, I think we can totally ESLify this mod get her done let's just get her done um, did I already do this? Did we rename that mod, that, uh, spell and put a dash in it? That's like the easiest to-do list item. Whenever I see the creation kit, uh, this is props to Dark Fox, uh, I, uh, I think of Dark Fox, especially when I see that color of the unofficial patch, just because he runs it so often. I feel like it's what he puts on his... Um, thumbnails. I kind of want to change my thumbnails to all have me in it with a 
with a desktop or something. But, uh, I don't know. Then I would spend extra time picking the pictures and uh, then I would maybe make less episodes. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Hey, we got the search spell. Here we go. Boop. Search. Save. Oh, let's undo a bunch of the nonsense that we did. Um, here, here's some translation stuff we were doing. Discard. Here's a player script we made. You know, we made a bunch of changes to the ESP since our last change, which uh, switched everything over to loose scripts. Uh, we, we're probably not going to need this English file anymore. We're not going to use that style of translation. Uh, we're not going to need the player script. That can be discarded. Uh, that can be discarded. We don't need those messages. I kind of want to just uh, revert the ESP. Let me just revert everything. Yeah, I'm literally just, I selected everything. I'm discarding the changes. Discard all the changes. Cool. Uh, and for the PBJ, um, we made it stop packaging things. We made it copy things, but uh, we also made it copy translation files. And so um, uh, we'll wait to commit that later, but I'll make it no longer do the package with the translation files. Package, false. Cool, it's already false. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna close all the windows and um, we can cross this off our list when I relaunch the creation kit. All right, let me make that change that spell again real quick. Because I, I refreshed the ESP. That's the benefit of using Git and GitHub, is I can literally just right click and go back to an old version of the ESP. Uh, I guess you could try and do that with Dropbox or just like copying and pasting stuff all over the place, but um, the GitHub app just makes that stuff so easy to undo a bunch of stuff I was doing. Um, so let's just do dash, okay, save, GitHub, the ESP has changed, and we'll say, uh, Changed spell name to add spell menu dash search. Cool. All right, let's finish our ESLification. Here's where we got our stuff. We had our stuff, but we didn't put this stuff there. Um, but we did get rid of our old cell. We shouldn't have a uh, spell and add spell menu cell. Let me get rid of it. I guess we really reset this ESP. Got rid of it and even went into SSE edit just to make sure that cells no longer show up. Let me switch back to CK. Cool. And I had to rename our little NPCs again. I made them temp container and trade spells. So let's go to our merchant place and we need a container, so the barrel, and we need our NPCs. Boop. Boop. Uh, let's rename this barrel like, um, pack container. Now let's put it in here. Cool. Now we want those instance IDs. Let's save everything. Is this the mod where we have instances? Um, God, I've been working on a bunch of different mods. Creator pack. We do need an instance of that pack. Because it's acting as a container. So here's the pack. Um, let's 
not the container part. We need the uh, container. So when you open up the spell chooser, it's been a while since I've been in here. Here's NPCs. We want the temp container NPC. This is the trade spells one. Let's get the temp one. 9971. Uh, let's compact everything first. Um, but before we compact stuff, let's make all the objects that we need. We were going to make one more spell. The spell was going to allow you to switch between the two modes where you search for either all spells that have tomes or just all spells in general, which is really just more for uh, testing mods. Uh, so let's make that spell real quick. And then we'll compact all of our form IDs, and then we'll update the form IDs and run it with ESL, and everything should work. Will be ESL flagged. Add spell menu. Uh, list spell, search spell. Toggle only spell tomes spell. Jeez. Uh, that's. Add spell menu. Sorry, I forget. Cool, I don't know if that name is too long because I want this name to be pretty long because that one is toggle only spell tomes spell. We'll call this the toggle only spell tomes effect. Whatever, I don't think that name shows up anywhere. Sorry, I forget. Close it. Attach a script. We've been calling the scripts for effects effect underscore something. So we will do add spell menu underscore effect. Then we'll type toggle only spell tone script. Nope. Toggle script. Toggle global script. Gross, but whatever. It's already too long. Toggle script. Do those ones have script in the name? No. So toggle spell tomes. Kind of close enough. Now that we've got that spell, let's associate it with uh, the effect that we just made so it doesn't blow things up. Um, where, why aren't all of our spells showing up? There we go. Toggle only spell tomes effect, whatever, decentish name. Let's give the effect a uh, conjuration or alteration or something so that it can actually be casted by the player. So we need a magic skill and we'll choose alteration. It alters something. Um, I kind of want to save and then compact. Um, created new spells ready to compact form IDs. Any spells and uh, NPC container instances. Cool, push that up. Okay, compact form IDs. Where is it? I just did this. I did it yesterday. Compact active file form IDs. And it's done. Compacted form IDs. We'll save that. Everything that has an ID will break, which is fine. 
Um, I'm tired of not knowing where all the spell where all the form IDs are. I'm just tired of it. Add spell menu form IDs. Dot PSE. Script name. And then uh, there's the activator pack. There's the activator container. Um, so uh, there's a form which is uh, these are all ints. We could call them forms. Add spell menu forms. Uh, here's all of our integers. Um, get uh, pack container ID. Activator ID. I still don't love the name, but whatever. Um, get some. Um, NPC spell trader ID get NPC temp ID and I think those are all the IDs um, because the spell terms already exist fuck there's one more ID um, which is fine because we haven't finished this yet uh, we need a spell tome for that new spell that we made, otherwise it won't show up in the search, and the whole point is for the search to be able to find the spell that lets you toggle whether or not spell tomes are required. So we need a spell tome for the spell that says whether or not spell tomes are required. Let's make a tome. Toggle only spell tomes. Tome. Toggle tome requirement tome. There's no way it can be allowed to be that long. What do we call the spell? This is what we call the spell. Here's what we call this. Spell tome for that. That's the name of that. That's the spell. These tomes are actually out of date in terms of the spell names. The list tome needs brackets around it. And the search tome needs the dash. And then the brackets with the dash. We're going to compact one more time because we made a new form. We made the tome. Let's spell tome for a toggle tome requirement spell uh, and compact IDs again. Um, now we're not going to put that spell tome in the pack because nobody's going to want that and it's not going to have its own activator. Uh, you're going to have to search for it, um, which is totally fine. So let's grab the IDs now that we've compacted. Here's our temp container as we're calling it. 
there's the temp NPC ID, and this is 80B. Now there's the trader, 80C. There's the container itself, 80D. And then the pack activator is just a form. And that's 808. That doesn't have specific instances. Cool, now of course we can do this. Um, we can say uh, object reference get pack container instance. And of course, we can say string function. Uh, we say get mod name, but that's not going to change anytime soon. So string function. Um, unless the translations do anything like that, but they shouldn't. String functions get mod form and form ID. And then we don't need this in quest game get form from file form id comma add spell menu dot esp cool and we can go through and do these if we want to um, return get mod form get pack container instance id as object reference. Of course, these could just be in here if we never never need these IDs. Um, do you think we're ever going to need the IDs? a form a mod form this one's another object reference reference. These were the actors, actually. And the container is just a uh, object reference. Dope. Let's make sure everything compiles. broke something in the PPJ. Probably fix that real quick. False, false. Coming out this whole section. Oops. I think you can't have a packages section without stuff in it. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And now this quest gives you the pack activator thingy. Activator. 
and that's got all the two tomes and the two activators in it. There's the spell chooser. There's the sky UI one. Got temp container NPC. Cool. So there's one that controls NPCs, that's fine. It's been a while since I've been here. Uh, this is the temp one. Temp actor equals uh We want the we want the temp instance. Must have still left ID on there. And there's this other one, the actor. Must not be the temp one. That's the traitor actor. I would get actor and mod actor. We don't need that anymore. Get the traitor one. Traitor actor. Actor, traitor, actor equals. Uh, traitor instance. If we set spells, set the spells on the traitor actor. If we set spells. We set spells on the temp actor. Cool, 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 cool. Compiles. I'm almost surprised. Um, I wonder if it fucking works. About like an hour and a half now, just over. Okay, I've got a little bit of time. Cool, let's make sure that we can open up the pack. Can't equip this item. Um, there's probably some uh, ID that's hanging out somewhere. Activator pack. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, pack container equals add spell menu forms dot. What's all this extra crap doing on there? Um, what was here? Pack container. Pack container activate. Cool. Pack container dot activate. And we don't have any custom cells. And we have squished all the form IDs. stuff. Pack still works. Let's get rid of three things in it. Pack still there. Let's get rid of the last thing. Should we say pack is removed? At the top left. Pack container. 
type instance. And it would be something like this. Pack activator form. Remove it from the player. Easy peasy. So much easier having this global. Should have done it from the get go. I want to move away from that whole um, like we've been doing, having everything reference the the quest. These little getters are fast enough. Look at the top left. From the container, which is the player, remove the item, get the activator form. Say to wait. We know that's right because get pack activator form is what we use in the quest script to give it to the player in the first place. So it's what we use to give it to the player in the first place. So if this container object representing the pack instance doesn't have any items in it, then from the container, which is the player, Just remove the activator. Is compile okay? Compile's okay. I know what's going on. I, I know totally what's going on. Follow me as we go into the merchant container warehouse place. Come with me on this little journey. All right, let's go there. That's our container that represents stuff. Add. Add spell menu. Pack instance script. Bam. Save. Close. Run. All right, let's see if it works. It wasn't attached. It couldn't possibly have worked. Now what happens when I remove this last one in the upper left? It's been removed. Cool. Spell clone should still work. Activator should work. Search for fire. Search all spells for fire. Cool. Um, let's use our powers to search. And let's use it to search for add spell menu. We could click in here or search all spells. This is the only one we haven't learned. And it's called toggle spell tone requirement. We just learned it. We can cast it. And it does bub kiss. Bub kiss. Oh, and it's a spell. We should, I guess we can make it a power. A lesser power. Make it a lesser power and let's make it do stuff. Let's make it toggle that global variable. Um, we could give it a reference to that global variable. Let's do that now. And while this loads, let's go to VS Code and go to the, here. And what is that global called? Compile that, and then when we go to our effect on the um, 
uh, for swapping that, we should see and be able to uh, auto-fill that property. And that is the toggle only spell tones effect. Properties, auto-fill all. Now we have a reference to that global variable, which is sweet. And we want to take the spell that we made for it and make it a lesser power. Cool. Save. Uh, we can hop into the game now, or we can just make this do what it's supposed to do right now. Um, event on effect start at the target, actor caster, and event. Um, int, um, is just that a float? Get value int. It's an int. Cool. Uh, int um, current value equals add spell menu require spell time get value int. Um, or we could just say uh, if that equals zero, else, and if. If it's zero, we'll set it to one. If it's not zero, we'll set it to zero. And uh, let's print out a message. There's more stuff to translate, but um, Spell menu now only shows spells with associated spell tones. Now shows all spells in those without associated spell tones. Might not render perfectly, but now we should be able to see all of our. Um, do we have any spells in our game that um, aren't supposed to be exposed? I could have turned that um, teleport spells thing back on. Um, so that we've got something better to search for. I just sorted. So where'd it go? Oh, let's search for add spell menu. Here we go. Here's all the spells in there. Like this one. Ooh, it shows up as spell, not a power. I think because it's not voice activated. And meanwhile, let me turn the spells thing back on. We'll do it after we close creation kit, remind me. I have it downloaded. I just need to reinstall it. Those teleport spells, it's got effects that aren't the spells, so it'll be really useful. It's got spells that aren't the spells. Oh my god, phone. I need to keep it on for work. Um, I should have a new project soon, and then I can do less videos. But in the meantime, I'm trying to teach you all that I can, all that I can activate with voice. Save. Downloads. Teleport spells. Install. Enable. Run the game.
We'll just use a list first. And then we'll search. Search takes a while. Uh, if we look in the teleport spells right now, we just see these. Now if we go into uh, add spell menu, we can get that. Oh cool, we can also um, get this if you want. It doesn't have an associated spell tone. Uh, so let's actually use our new spell. Now shows all spells. Actually, go into my always rainy in Skyrim. Cool, now I have naked rain, which I never made a spell tome for. There we go. They're all rain, but some of them are just drizzly. Cool, well, I already have proof that that works. Um, let's uh, look at. Search. Let's find one first uh, for these teleportation spells. Let's look for Omni. Just make sure show work. Uh, Omni. Now, if you remember, this will take a while, and it says searching all spells. This will take a while. It takes like six seconds or something. Every spell in the game. It's way more useful to use this with the list. Cool, now we can see both of them. If we use our power, again, now it'll only show associated tones. So let's search again and let's do Omni. It should be way faster. Like, the both of them. Cool, then we can learn it. Cool, 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 cool. Um, spell now works, which toggles the requirements for spell tones. Let's ESL flag it and then peace. script. I guess we have a cache, which is good. Find the ESP plugins that can be turned into ESLs. Cool. That spell menu can, and it doesn't have any warnings about uh, needing to come back to the form IDs, and it doesn't have any warnings about um, cells. So we can do it right now. File header. Edit. I don't think I'm going to upload it right away. I want to have another episode where we... Um, Look at upgrading, but maybe I will upload it right away. People would super duper prefer it. I don't need to look at upgrading. I wanted to do these things like uh, make some better functions, but we did this. I'll see if this happens with Vortex now. You can see that's represented below. We did this, then save that file. Um, ESLify. Cool, and what I'll do is tonight I'll um, uh, I'll uh, rebuild this into a zip, test that it works from that, and upload it ESLify because I'm sure people would like that, and people keep downloading the damn thing. So, okay, that felt rough. That felt really rough because I really thought we would get those translations done, and I thought SKSE built-in translations with those translation files could help us. Localizing a mod is way more than that. 
Hmm. That's a good way to localize an MCM menu though, mod configuration menu. So cheapers, creepers, peepers. We made various updates to the add spell menu. I will write up all the various things that we did in the YouTube description. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back to translate this thing. I don't know when that will be, but it'll be soon. All right. Peace, y'all. Happy modding. Bye-bye.